Joining us now, Brookings Institution Senior Fellow and author of Why Presidents Fail and How They Can Succeed Again, Elaine Kmark. Elaine, you wrote about trust and you wrote about our institutions, our governmental institutions, and how resilient they were, how they were designed to be resilient in the face of somebody who wanted to come in and, and try to abuse them, like Donald Trump. Do you think that we are still as resilient as Donald Trump is running again, as the polls are neck and neck? He might retake the White House? Well, I think we saw in the first term that our institutions were very resilient, and that was a good thing. The founding fathers had to be smiling in, from their graves that it all worked. The judiciary was independent, did not allow Trump to overturn the election. Congress stood up to him not once but twice. They impeached him. Um, you know, they held held him back from doing things that he wanted to do, like revoking um, Obamacare. Uh, you know, the institutions worked. The governors during COVID, the governors stood up to him and said, no, we know you want things to open up. But even Republican governors defied him. The press is in pretty good shape. Just before we came on, I checked to make sure the New York Times is still making a profit. You guys are still making a profit. So things are things are things are going well. The press is not dead. Um, and finally, the federal bureaucracy, they work according to the rule of law. The business of FEMA officials giving money to immigrants is just ridiculous. You can't do that. That is illegal. OK, there are the the government giving gives out money to the agencies in fairly e well-defined pots. And a federal official can't just move that around without the consent of Congress. So, so far, uh, what I'd say about this is so far, so good. What we saw in the first term was the federal government, the courts, the governors, everyone standing up and checking Trump's worst instincts. What about our ability to agree on truth, to agree on facts, to have a shared reality? And this is not entirely Donald, Fun Donald Trump's fault, but this is a product of a culture where we can go to any one of our silos to get the information that we want to hear. You say the news business is doing fine. We're not doing as well as we used to because there are so many different places you can go and get news, news and quotes. You can get somebody on YouTube right. just talking and you'll say, oh, that person knows what they're talking about. They don't know what they're talking about. Or you can go and read a post on Facebook. You know, you can hear that dogs and cats are being eaten by immigrants and you can choose to believe that even over the officials who are saying, no, this is not true. And again, this is social media. This is where you can go and get your information. But it's helped along by Donald Trump. Donald Trump showing a lot of politicians and uh, people who want to use that, that you can get away with lying as long as you repeat it enough. And as long as you as long as you target something that people want targeted. Do you do you, are you worried not so much about the institutions, but about, but about the ground underneath our institutions? Um, I am worried about that. And what I'm particularly worried about is that Donald Trump will use his ability to lie and to undercut um, institutions. And in a second term, he'll be smarter about it. And he'll look for ways of weakening those institutions. Today, the Congress, the press, the judiciary is as strong as it was in legal terms, purely legal terms. It has all the powers. He didn't take power away. But Keeping this kind of rhetoric up begins to undermine trust, and you begin to elect people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and other MAGA types in the Congress who would happen happily undo the guardrails of our democracy. And that's where it gets really, really serious. And I think that's why so many people are concerned about a second term for Donald Trump. Does it worry you about... Um violence in the future, political violence or a, a fracturing of this country? I am and I'm not. I mean, mm. so far, are not a banana republic, okay? Donald Trump like does not so far. have... 
<laughs> uh, so far, right. I mean, I think there are some people who would like us to be, but so far, Donald Trump does not control the means of force. He does not control the military. We saw this on January 6th when it was Mike Pence and Nancy Pelosi on the phone to the Pentagon, not Donald Trump. And so, so far, so good. The military, the police forces, they are still working according to the rule of law, not according to what Donald Trump or some other mega politician says. But that can unravel. It has unraveled in other countries around the world, although never in a country with as long a tradition of democracy as ours. So I'm sort of cautiously optimistic. I'll take that. I'll take that. I like that. Elaine K. Mark, uh, thank you very much for joining us on this nebulous issue of trust. Appreciate <laughs> Thanks it. Thanks for having me.